Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you've been following along for a while, you know that uh, we've been working on plenty of campers here. And this frame that's behind me right now is a 1961 Aljo. And it used to be our photo booth camper, which I recently tore all the way back down to the frame to rebuild it better as a photo booth camper again. Uh, I've already sprayed it down with the hose to get any uh, dirt and mud that's collected on it off and uh, I've taken off a couple little screws here and there and pulled the wheels off so they're not in the way. So what we're gonna do, since there is some rust and a bit of paint on this frame and I would like to uh, get it all nice and clean and then prime it and repaint it, uh, we're gonna take our grinder with this 80 grit flap wheel on it and we're gonna go along and we're just gonna knock down as much of that rust and old paint as we can before we repaint it. Now, I've been asked a couple of times how these frames were prepared from the factory, and I'm not 100% sure, so what I could be saying is, uh, let's say completely made up, but from experience working on these, I do not believe most of these were coated in any kind of way to protect them against rust from the factory. Now, I might be wrong. They might have been zinc dipped. None of them that I've worked on have been painted from the factory. Uh, and the thing that I've noticed is as soon as you pull the body off of them and leave them set out in the uh, rain for a little bit, they start to surface rust. So to me, that says they're probably not coated in any kind of way. Again, this is me just talking out of my other end because uh, I don't really know. I, I have no idea what they actually did to prepare these at the factory, but what I usually do is I grind them down and uh, prime them, paint them again. Some people do like to use POR15, I think, and that's a really heavy duty um, sort of underlining, and it's pretty expensive. There are alternatives that you can get at like Tractor Supply and places like that. Again, I don't really find it to be super necessary. Like I said, I don't have problems with it chipping off. Uh, I've never had any of these really start to rust on me after I've painted them. But anyway, blah, 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 blah. Let's get to work. Okay, so that right there, that's why you wear one of these, because otherwise all that's going down into your lungs. Anyway, uh, if you have a lot of paint on your chassis already, it might be a better idea to strip it before you sand on it. I think I'm gonna try a little stripper on the front hitch uh, where there's several coats of paint there and see if that works a little better, because it kind of gums up the uh, sanding disc. So my mask broke when I took it off and I don't want to waste another one just to grind this last little tiny piece off. So I'm just going to hold my breath. So I'll thank you not to criticize me in the comments for that. So that there is what I generally consider to be good enough to 
move on to painting. But usually before that, I will run the garden hose over it again, which I know it sounds weird, uh, but I'll run the garden hose over it again to wash off any of the dust. And then once that's dry, I'll usually wipe it down with uh, some degreaser. Usually the degreaser that I use is this uh, wax and tar remover. A couple wipes down real quick, let that dry, and then I'll go ahead and uh, put some primer on it. If you don't have the uh, wax and tar remover, you can also just use uh, some soapy water. Just make sure and rinse away all the uh, soap when you're done wiping it down. And let it dry real good. And then I usually use the just Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer. Some people like to use an actual rust converter, but I usually only use rust converter on pretty heavily rusted metal. Uh, where this is just little surface rust on there. I find this really works pretty well. I've never had any trouble with it. Uh, I've used it for years painted trailer frames with it, painted bathtubs with it. Uh, seems to work pretty well. As soon as that's real and truly dry, uh, I'm gonna give it just a little bit more time. Move my assistant out of the way. Probably give it a couple of coats. And yeah, move on from there. Okay, so that's one pretty good coat on there. You can also buy that stuff in a uh, just a regular paint can that you could roll or brush on. And, you know, in some ways that's easier to paint the bottom side of it. Sort of like spray cans, because you can get into little crevices pretty easy. And uh, when you're done, you know, all you have is some paint cans to dispose of. You don't have a bunch of brushes to wash and all that. I'm going to go over it one more time, make sure I didn't miss anything, and then it should be ready for a top coat. And I'm gonna be coating that with just uh, regular Rust-Oleum gloss protective enamel. Uh, I find this stuff works pretty well on trailer frames. Reasonably durable and doesn't chip off super easy. So if a rock hits it, you know, you're probably okay. If it does chip off, it's easy to touch up. So, and it's inexpensive. Usually just a Two, three coats is enough to put a pretty durable layer on that. But of course, what's gonna happen is you'll move this around or see it in different light and you'll see a whole area that you completely missed. So keep a little extra on hand for uh, touching up after the fact. I think that will pretty well take care of the frame. Uh, I'll paint the hubs when I pull those off to uh, check the bearings and uh, get those ready to roll. You know, as far as like painting the suspension components, the springs and stuff like that, you can. I mean, those are kind of expendable parts. You get a new set and they look nice and black, but eventually, you know, a few months down the line, you'll start to see some surface rust on them. And that's just the way springs are. So paint them if you want. If you paint them, at least everything will look nice and shiny under there for you weirdos that like to get under there and look at those things. But so I'm going to let that dry and uh, go get ready for work. Okay, well, there you have it. Nice painted trailer frame. Hopefully it'll last for many more years. One thing before I wrap up here, uh, you know, in the past, some people have said, hey, you know, you could just take that to a shop and have it powder coated. And yes, absolutely you could. It's not as expensive as you might think it would be, but it's uh, definitely more expensive than a few cans 
of Rust-Oleum. In my opinion, not really all that necessary. Now, if you want to do the most immaculate restoration of a camper ever, then yeah, sure, take it and get it powdered coated. Uh, if you decide to paint over a powder coating, that's a little, you know, tricky in some cases. So, you know, if you want a different color for the tongue of your trailer frame, than what you've painted it here or what you've had it powder coated, that may be a concern for you. Now, I will probably not be keeping the tongue of this black. I don't really care what color it is underneath there because no one will see it. Regardless, when it comes time to paint this camper its final color, I'll wind up having to scuff over all that and uh, repaint it whatever color I decide. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.